I, I cannot remember if I actually focused on this. I believe I had mentioned that I wanted to talk a little bit about the importance of being born again. And I don't remember if I addressed this or not on a Sunday morning in our class. So I said it and then moved on to something else. So First Peter 1 and 3, we'll, we'll start there. The the just and so I'm I'm skipping around. I'm just sort of I'm been chewing on one part of the, the chapter or the verse and then go to another part of it. And so I'm really doing a little bit out of sequence, but so be it. I just wanna Peter writes and says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy, everybody say abundant mercy. Oh my. Oh, that's why I'm here today, because of the abundant mercies of God. All the abundant mercies of God. Hallelujah. I like that. I just like that, you know, he could have said his mercy, but he says his abundant mercy. I I just, I like that. Then he says, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. And uh, then verse 20, uh, Let's see where's that verse twenty two, I want twenty three. I want to just sort of bring that out again. He says, says it again. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Hallelujah. What is the importance of being born again? I'd like us to. Go back to what most of us know, John chapter 3. Let's start with verse 1. I know this is going to be basic for some of us today, but... You know know what the Apostle Paul said that sort of came to my mind this morning? He said this, I am determined to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And to me, if you can get that truth right, amen, you can help somebody. Amen. There are a lot of things the Word of God says. And uh, I was mentioning the other day to somebody, you know, there, there are 19 kings of Judah and 19 kings of the northern kingdom of Israel and the one queen. And, and, and really, they, they ain't going to save nobody. You know, what saves them is the message of Jesus Christ. What he has done in our lives. Uh, the gospel, the death, the burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so if, we're not going to read everything that we, we're gonna, we've got here in John, but I want you to note that this man that he is talking to, all right, is, is not a, a man that doesn't know the Scripture. He is, he is a teacher himself. He's, he's a Pharisee. He's, uh, so he's grounded in what he understands of the Old Testament because we won't go to it today, but... Jesus is going to ask him or make the statement to him, you being a teacher don't know these things. Okay. So here he goes. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no man can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Now this, again, I, I don't know why he said these things other than maybe he felt it was important that he understand that although he was a Pharisee, he was not coming with the prejudiced view of the majority of the Pharisees who absolutely opposed Jesus. If you if you read through the gospel, you can you see these men the conniving and cheating and lying and you know just whatever they got to do to get Jesus destroyed. And and these men were supposed to be righteous men that were supposed to be leaders of Israel, and they were doing anything but being that. <clears throat> but this man's approach is an approach that recognizing that Jesus is very important, and he's inquiring of him. <clears throat> Jesus, when he answers him, uh, his answer doesn't fit in with what the man's been saying, all right? Because he immediately starts by making this statement, most assuredly, I say to unless. Everybody say unless. That, that's a conditional word, okay? That, that means that there's, there really is no exception to this, all right? There's no exception. Unless one is born again, 
he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay, that word see there, it, it, it's a Hebrew idiom that literally means to obtain or possess, okay? Just, just hang out with me. The reason I'm saying that, because later on in the book of Luke, chapter 17, Jesus is going to say to the Pharisees that the kingdom of God does not come with observation, which would suggest to us that it's something that you see. And then he would go on to say that the kingdom of God is within us, you see. And so he says to this man here that unless one is born again, he cannot see or possess or obtain the kingdom of God. Now, Nicodemus, as many of you know, his, his response indicates that he is very limited in, in his understanding of what Jesus is talking about. For he says, how can a man be born again when he's old? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Uh, can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? All right. So his question, so he, his application of what Jesus has said is he's thinking of a totally a natural birth, all right? And so that's what, because he, he doesn't get this being born again or being born from above. So it just, it don't make sense to him, okay? And then in response to this man, uh, how can it, uh, one be born again? Does he have to go back in his mother's womb? Be born again? Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless, if, if you're reading King James, says, accept. Again, this is, a, this is telling us that without this condition, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now he's telling us that that's a condition that must be met, all right, in order to get into the kingdom of God. Just... Hang out. Now, my, my reason for uh, bringing these things out today is I want to stress to you its importance, but perhaps from a way that you have really not looked at it before. Okay, if, if we can possibly do that today. Hallelujah. I will, I will say this to you, that the majority of the Christian world will go all the way over to verse 16 of this same chapter, and they will hinge everything on verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that to whosoever uh, believeth in him, they shall not perish but have everlasting life. And they absolutely ignore verse 3 through 5. Okay? They ignore it. Now, <clears throat> so what, what, it, what, it, what it's done in our world today, it is giving us more or less like, two salvation plans, if I could put it like that. Because some will say that all you have to do is really come simply to a mental belief that Jesus is the Savior, and that is enough. Okay? You understand? It's, and so they will have you go through a formula that you can find nowhere in the Bible. The formula is simply something most of us probably have heard it. It's called the sinner's prayer. You know, and you, you so you say the prayer and, and you invite Jesus into your heart and then you are told after that that you are saved. Okay. I, I asked at a Bible study, I think Brother Nowak was with me. Uh, there was a man named Peter. I asked him, would you, would you show me in the Bible? I'm giving you an assignment. I don't normally do this, but I'm giving you an assignment. Peter, I want you to come back next week when we're in Bible study. And I want you to tell me where, where that's found in the scripture. Okay? And so I came in the next week, and I hadn't forgot what I'd asked him to do. And so I asked him, did you find anywhere in the scripture? And, and he said, well, No. And then he cited two well-known people, I could give you their names, and most of you would know who they are, who use those comments, amen, and one's a woman and one's a guy that just are very well-known today, and, they, and he said they say that, okay, they bring it out in their material. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the basis of my salvation is not the basis of what some guy writes in a book. The only book that I 
I will again have assurance and I rest upon is one called the Word of God. Okay? So if what you write in the book contradicts what the Word of God says, well, guess what I'm going to do with your book? File 13. I remember, I remember, uh, you know, back when uh, casting out devils started becoming popular in the charismatic world and and so I picked up a book about uh, that, and, and I'm reading. I just start reading it, and this, this guy's talking about some things. And, and then he says, you know, you, you start with the name of Jesus, but, you, you know, you get to a point. you got to understand it's, it's not a magical incantation that you use. And so after what, when you become experienced with this, you no longer need to use the name. And I read that stuff and says, okay, file 13. Is the man nuts? Yeah, hallelujah. And so what what I'm trying to tell you today, now, you don't have to receive this. You can do whatever you want to do with it. But you see, you're dealing, this is dealing with my salvation. I I, I can't afford to play with this stuff, man. You know, there's, there's, there's things, you know, I, uh, you know, I'm, there's things that I I read about and, you know, I take it or leave it. But when I, when it comes to my salvation, this isn't an issue I'm taking or leaving, you see. Yeah, this, this is a base upon which I stand. This is where my confidence and my hope and my faith is based on. Now, let, let me just say to you. So, so we, we believe you've got to be born again of water and spirit, as Jesus said in verse, verse 5. And then others believe in, in verse 16 that you just simply, you go through a sinner's prayer, and they'll go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, and, and then they'll, they'll use, if sometimes they'll fall back on Acts 16 with the Philippian jailer. Okay. Uh, now, here's the deal. All these things are elements of salvation. Okay? Do you, you understand what I'm saying by that? I mean, you don't understand what I'm saying. Okay. All right. How do you get faith? What, what does the Bible say? Well, how are you going to hear? You need a preacher. That's what Romans chapter 10 says. So in order to have faith, you you need a preacher that's going to preach the word of God. Again, listen to me. Those are all elements of salvation. You must believe with the heart. That's an element of salvation. You must confess. That's an element of salvation. Those are all parts of being saved. So what you get in, in John chapter 3, you're getting elements. There's an element of being born again of water and spirit, and there's also an element of believing. In fact, as it says in Hebrews eleven six, if we do not believe, we cannot please God. So believing is the very foundation of our, of our walk and our salvation. Are, are you still with me? Have, have I, I'm not trying to offend you. I just want your, you know, they, 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 they accuse us of, well, your, your, your relationship with God is just based upon your feelings and your experience. I have an experience and I have feelings. But it's totally based upon what the Word of God says. With joy you shall draw waters from the wells of salvation. Hallelujah. I understand. Hallelujah. Hey, these men are drunk. And the answer goes back, these men are not drunk as you you think. You understand? So there is an expression. There is feeling. Amen. There is joy. There is emotion in this thing. Walking with God and coming to salvation is not just some mere intellectual ascent. Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? That's why when they, people come to this, this house and you get expressive, they, their eyebrows go up and they say, what's going on here? My God. The same person can go to a rock concert, you know, and watch everybody go nuts and, and not think anything about it. Come to the house of God and you all just worship, praise God, and it's strange to them and weird to them. Well, ain't nobody at a rock concert ever died for me. Amen. Ain't no rock money at a rock concert ever shed their blood and given me salvation. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody at a rock concert ever given me any mercy. I got my mercy from Jesus Christ. So if I come and express myself in his presence, you know what? If you got an issue with that, that's your issue. That's not my issue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
You know, I, I believe in a living God. I believe in a live God. And Amen. And if you don't understand it, just go put your... I also believe that electricity can do something if you put your finger in the socket. And sometimes I put my finger in the socket of his spirit. <laughs> wow, whoa, yeah, it just, it does something to me. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, I, I can't get too sidetracked by this. I, I just love when people get expressive about their God. Hell, I really do. You know, some of us are very unique in our expression. And, you know, I mean, Sharon's very unique. She does this, she does this twirl, you know, and screeches a little bit. And Brother, Brother Brian, he just does that. He, he glides. He super glides. Super glides. You know. Yeah. I don't know what I am. I'm Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> and if I fall, you ain't putting the pieces back together again. <laughs> okay, I got to get back to where we're at. So, so we're taught in the Word of God that we must be born again. And of course... That, that, that experience initially begins in Acts, okay, when the church begins. And uh, Jesus Christ, of course, has told them to go wait until they're endured with power from on high. And the promise of the Father is going to come in those things. Now, so why? So why do we need to be born again? Are you ready for this? I'm going to give you some. We're going to go to Romans chapter 5, verse 12. But hear me. Our first... And natural birth identifies us with Adam. All right? That's what it does. When I'm born into the world for the first time, it identifies me with Adam. And hear me. Adam was in, in, was in condemnation. All right? Okay, here's what it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Therefore... Just as through one man sin into the world, death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. The reason I got to be born again is because when I'm born for the first time, I identify with Adam, amen, who had a sentence of death over him. You got to understand that, lady. If you don't get that, you ain't going to get it at all. You know, if you think for a moment that you somehow can evade death, first of all, you ain't Enoch. All right? And if Jesus doesn't come in another five years, you have no, you don't know if you'll be alive. I don't know if I'll be alive when I walk out of this building today. I mean, one of the kids could run me over and wipe me out. You don't know. So I, my flesh is under the sentence of death. You can't escape that. If you, under, if you understand the need, amen, this body is not going to inherit the kingdom of God. You understand it. So I've been born once into sin. That's what, that's what Paul's telling us. Verse 14, if you jump to verse 14. Nevertheless, it says, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who have not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam. Amen. I, I, I may not have sinned like Adam. I may not have been like that. But regardless, I'm still under the sentence of death. And then it says here, uh, I, I like what it says, according to the likeness of the trans transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. Hallelujah. When the Lord said, let us make man in our image. You know what I think he did? He said, okay, here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be born of a woman, robed in flesh. That's how I'm going to design man. Just, just, I'm just throwing that out. That's just, that's just me. You can throw that aside if you want. All right. Now, verse 15. But the free gift is not like the offense. For by one man's offense, many died. Much more. Everybody say much more. Much more. The grace of God and, and the gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Notice it says the one man. 
Where is the where is the reconciliation? It's in the man Christ Jesus. The man Christ Jesus died on the cross. The spirit that dwelt in the man did not die on the cross. You got to under spirit does not die. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For if by one man's offense, uh, I, I would jump down to verse 17. But for by one man's offense, death reigned through the one much more those who received the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are under the sentence of death. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. All right. We got an extra page here. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. I don't know if you, 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 you got to think on this a minute. I was born once. My flesh is like the flesh of Adam. All right? And in Adam, all die. Everybody say, all die. You're not getting by. All die. But in Christ, in Christ, all shall be made alive. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. It's great. This is great stuff. Why do I need to be born again? Because when I was born in this world, I was born in this flesh. Amen. And I took on the nature of Adam. And I want you to know that, amen, flesh is condemned. That's why. That's why you get sick. That's why you get sick. You're still living in an earthly body. <laughs> it was still susceptible to what this world has, the corruption of this world. People do so much to try to avoid that corruption. Why don't you just age gracefully? I mean, I, y'all can't be, you know what? Some things get better with age. Isn't that true? So I, I'm getting better. The older I get, I get better. Now, I can't do what I did 20. I can't do what I did five years ago. <laughs> For me to get to the floor, it's like long distance, man. It takes me forever to get there. And then if I get on the floor, amen, I'm going to call Nelson's. You don't even know who Nelson is, do you? David Nelson. Amen. They, they used to have cranes here in Kenosha. Hey, I need one to come by my house. I got to get me up off the floor. That's what happens to your body. We're aging. Why are we aging? Because we're under condemnation. This physical flesh is under condemnation. You ain't taking it to heaven. And I'm so glad I'm not. I've seen too many people die. And I've seen the grotesque death mask. And I've seen their bodies all, amen, just, amen, just curled up and shrunk. And, and it's awful. I don't want to take that to heaven. So are, are you getting this in? So for our first birth, it identifies us with Adam in condemnation. Therefore, I need to be born again. Because in Adam, all die. Okay, let's go on verse 45 here. I guess I'm not going to get too much farther than this this morning. Okay. And so it says it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. Amen. What, what did God form us from? So that's all you. You're just a bunch of mud. You're mud. Turn your neighbor and say, you're mud. You're just mud. You're wonderful, you're lovable and likable, but you're just mud. You're just mud. <laughs> Maybe that's why they get those mud mud treatments, huh? Well, I go back to that mud. Maybe maybe something will come out of that that's different than when, when I went in. <laughs> you're just mud. Hallelujah. Maybe maybe that's maybe that's why Jesus would spit and make mud and put it in the socket. 
Says, I did this a long time ago, back to when I created it. This is no big deal. Put it in the socket. All right, go wash. Hallelujah. And he comes and he's got an eyeball and the whole business and it works. You know, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the, the first man, Adam, became a living being, it says. And then the Bible says the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Do you know who the last Adam was? That's Jesus. Hallelujah. That's Jesus who was born of a woman. Do you, you, you remember what he said in you remember what he said in the gospel of John? He said, It's expedient that I go. Do you remember him saying that? You know, they're all up there in the room, and I can see him just like our kids. Oh, don't go, don't go, stay with us. I it's necessary or it's expedient that I go, for if I do not go away, guess what cannot come? The comforter which is the Spirit. He would say to His disciples, I am with you, but I shall dwell in you. What's He talking about? He's talking about that life-giving Spirit. Hallelujah. That would dwell in the life of the believer. Amen. Verse 46. However, the spiritual is not first. Is that not true? Adam was not first, or uh, Jesus was not first. Adam was. The spiritual is not first, but the natural. And afterward, the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. You want to know who Jesus is? Just read what it says there. He is the Lord from heaven. What's it? He's God who wrapped himself in a body of flesh and dwelt among us. And so what does it say? As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. What are you made of, ladies and gentlemen? Well, there wasn't everybody in the house. We're made of dust. Some of you is pretty dust. Some of you are not so pretty dust. Okay. As is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. We got to be born again. Why? Because you've got to take on the, the nature of the one who came, the second Adam. And you don't get that nature by just a natural birth. You get that nature by a spiritual birth. You must be born again to get the second birth and to get the nature, the nature of God. Haven't you ever read in Galatians chapter 6? Amen. Or chapter 5, excuse me. I mean, you get the works of the flesh. And then you go down to like verse 22, and it says, it talks about the, the, fruit, the fruit of God's spirit, love, joy, peace, you know, goodness, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, temperance against such, there is no, that, that, is, that is God's spirit. So when God fills you with his spirit, hallelujah, he puts in you the capability of loving people. He puts in you the capability of being patient and, and forgiving and kind and gracious and if you're not those things, amen, you need, to, you need to go back and get pruned. Because a plant must be pruned to bring forth its best fruit. Hallelujah. And so some of us, God is pruning us. You know, I, I've never asked a plant that I cut off a, a branch or whatever. Did that hurt? Never asked one there. Have you? You know, I used to mow my wife's rose bushes down with the lawnmower because I was mean. That's what happens when I don't get no food. I get mean. And so I just, you know, you know, that, you know, I just getting even for the fact that those prickers got me. I told my wife, man, if you guys don't keep this bush right, I know what to do about it. I'm a menace to flowers. Hallelujah. That's, that's, I got to, I got to, oh God, help me. I know, I know. I just, I don't got a green thumb. Hallelujah. I got prickers to prove it. All right. 
I'm of the dust. And so, verse 48 again, I just sort of got wound up here. As with the man of dust, also are those who are made of dust. And as the heavenly man also, so also are those who are heavenly. See, what you don't see is what I really am. And sometimes you see by what I do when I do nice things. And other times you see the old boy. We want to crucify that boy. But my God, do you not understand that dwelling in me is eternal life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're, ever, if, if you're here when I die, if the Lord tarries and I die, just come and say, see me, you sure ugly. You mean, what was good about you has left this body. All right, can you just, just, just tell me. I, I, it won't affect me, won't bother me. I won't care in the least. You can say whatever you want to say about me. You, you see, that's, that's why the Apostle Paul, uh, that's why the Apostle Paul would say, amen. Although the outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed day by day. Now, this old body's perishing, but there's something happening. I'm getting stronger on the inside. I'm getting stronger. My, my spirit, amen, my spirit is getting stronger. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm stronger than I was, amen, since January 1st. I'm stronger than that day. I'm stronger, hallelujah. I'm stronger than I was yesterday, and I'm going to get stronger and stronger. You got to understand, the outside's dying. It's perishing, but inside, I'm getting more and more life and more and more life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So why do we spend so much time working on the outside? We ought to be working on what's in the inside. Hallelujah. Which is not going to perish and go away. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so Paul would say, and as we have borne the image of the man of dust, yeah, what you see right here you got to see what's on the inside there's life there it's it's exploding fireworks and man it's just pew, pew, celebrating hallelujah and as we have borne the image of the man of dust we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man ha you can't bear that image unless you're born again you see you see, being born once, you, you're under condemnation. You're under a sentence of death. Hallelujah. And that's why it says in verse 50, makes this statement. Now this I say, brother, that what? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's right, brother Rand. You can have it. My, well, who's ever left in my family can have everything I got because I will care nothing for it when I'm gone. Hallelujah. Huh. Nor does corruption inherit in corruption. My God. My God. Huh. My God. Wrap your brain around that this morning, ladies and gentlemen. What a hope we got today. Some of us are struggling so much to keep this alive. If I got a struggle, it's keeping what's on the inside alive and well. Hallelujah. Don't let the enemy stifle what God is doing in your life. Oh, and it's, do you understand? The Bible says clearly where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. If you get wrapped up in your flesh, that's bondage. But if you get wrapped up in the Spirit, there's liberty. Liberty. Hallelujah. Liberty. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You know, some of us are, we just got to have what this earth's got for us. And we feel we're going to miss out if we don't get what this world has. Are you nuts? This world pales in comparison to God. Pales. I'm 60 years old and I've seen what this world has to offer. offer and nothing about it is attractive to me. I'm wise enough to know that the picture it gives me is not the real picture. My God. There used to be black velvet. That's a whiskey. And they had they had the uh, they had the black the blackboard, the, the billboard. And there she was in her evening gown. Black velvet. And I used to look at her and say, Man, if I get black velvet. I get her? Does that come with her? Yeah. Well, you drink black velvet. Every woman looks like her. Did he miss that one? They missed that one. Oh, my God. They missed that one. You didn't think that was funny? <laughs> I mean, okay, I, I, I can't go there. I got I to gotta move on. I got to. You understand? But what, but what Miss, I called her Miss Slinky. What Miss Slinky didn't show you is the other side. The affairs, the adultery, the cirrhosis of the liver. Children not getting any food and shoeless and dirty faces because mom and dad or mom and whoever or dad and whoever are hung over and could care less about their kids. You see, I've seen the other sign of the billboard. It used to be the Marlboro man, you know, with his shirt on buttoned down to his his belly button, his hair on his chest showing, and cowboy hat on. And he ain't like that now. He ain't like that now. Yeah. Uh, understand what I'm saying? Why are we so attracted to that which is temporary, which absolutely offers no hope that will leave you in despair and ruin when you can be born again and have a living hope. Hallelujah! You ain't taking that body to heaven. Praise God. So I would suggest... That you start working on the inner man than on the outer man. He ain't a going. And if you've never been born again of water and spirit, may I say kindly to you, you ain't a going. You cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I got to be born again. Well, that's narrow minded. No, that's what his word says. I didn't, I didn't put this stuff together. I ain't that smart. That's right. It says cannot. I'm sorry. Well, you Pentecostals, you're judgmental. No, I'm not judgmental. I love I love everybody. Or I try to love everybody. Some of them are more difficult than others. You mean, and I got to pray about it and all that kind of stuff. And you had to change your mind, a renewed mind, all that. But uh, ain't my book. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord. So if you got family that's not born again, don't make excuses for them. Pray for them. And live for God in front of them. My God, every time you mess up, every time you say a rotten word, have a rotten attitude, amen, and do things that they do, and they step back and they look at you and say, I thought you went to church. Do you understand what they're saying? They are expecting more from you. And they have every right to expect more from you. Because you're supposed to be born again. You ain't supposed to be like the rest of them. That's what you used to be. But that guy died. Amen. A new life came into you. And that new life, amen, springs into us. And amen, we become so lovable, likable, wonderful. Hallelujah. My God. So that's why. That's why you got to be born again. 
Because you're just born once. You just, you're, you're under condemnation. You got to deal with what Adam deals with and what we all dealing with. But if you're born again, you got to live in hope. My God, I'm checking out one day. I'm going, Brother Brian, where there's no tears, no sorrow, no pain. Uh, no more stuff like no more. Let's stand. No more. No more disappointments. No more discouragement. No more devil. <laughs> no more devil. <laughs> yeah, I like that part real good. No devil. Let me run it by again. No devil. Praise God. No devil. I, I like that. No, do you hear that devil? No devil in heaven. You ain't a going. We're going. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, Jesus. Let's just lift our hands to our master this morning. Let's just praise him. Thank you, Jesus, for working our lives, calling us. Oh, God, it's so good to be born again by your spirit. Being, have your name called over us. Have our sins washed away. And I know, I know my flesh is perishing, God. I know it's dying, but inside of me there is an inner man that's growing stronger day by day. Hallelujah. It's waiting for that day. Amen. To be absent from the body, your word says, is to be present with the Lord. And I'm waiting for that day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we got to be born again. First man was under condemnation. The second man's not under condemnation. No, he's not. In him is life. And life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Why don't you just reach out to somebody. Just pray for them in closing. Tell them how much you care about them. And love them. And all that good stuff. And Amen. In the name of Jesus.